Hello viewers welcome to the new series of digital system design and today we will be discussing module 1 of this subject that is digital logic so the contents of today's lectures are today we will be discussing boolean algebra and in boolean algebra we will be first of all discussing its basic definition then its properties and then the most important thing that is the formulas in the boolean algebra or the formulas which are used to simplify the boolean expressions so that comes under boolean algebra postulates and theorems so let us start first of all we will start with the basic definition of boolean algebra now the basic definition of boolean algebra is that it is a mathematical system which deals with binary variables and binary operations now first of all let us understand what is the meaning of binary variable binary means two and a variable which is which can have only two values that is either 0 or 1 is called a binary variable over here so if there is a variable a in boolean algebra it can have only two values either 0 or 1 that is the meaning of binary variable and binary operation also mean that there are only two operations which are mainly focused over here that is and operation meaning dot and plus operation so these are the two operations that are mainly focused here so it is it mainly deals with binary operations and binary variables mean any variable which is having either zero or one value all right so this is the definition of boolean algebra and of course it primarily focuses on the values zero and one now important thing is that boolean algebra was introduced by mathematician george boole in 1854 and later it was modified by shannon so this is an important thing you must know that who introduced boolean algebra all right now the applications of boolean algebra see computer science electronics digital circuit design these all are the applications of boolean algebra so wherever you will find digital circuits there you will find the application of boolean algebra now let's move forward and see the properties of boolean algebra so the first property of boolean algebra is closure now what does closure means we have to understand it in a very simple language for example we have a set of 0 and 1 this is a set of two elements that is 0 and 1 now if we perform plus operation over here so 0 plus 1 will give you 1 so and 1 plus 0 will also give you 1 or 0 plus 0 will give you 0 or 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 in boolean algebra now what i mean to say over here is that if there is a set of elements like over here is 0 and 1 and an addition operation or the result of that operation is always giving you an element which is again the element of this particular set that means this set is closed under plus operation or you can say or operation why because when you are oring the two elements of this particular set then the result of the operation again belongs to the this set so whenever the result of any operation belongs again to this particular set or any set then that set is closed under that particular operation so if i take a set of 0 comma 1 so it will be set to be closed under or operation or meaning plus operation this is also closed under and operation because and means product so 0 into 1 will give you 0 which belongs to this particular set and 1 dot 0 will also give you 0 which again belongs to this set so it is also closed under and operation and it is as well as closed under not operation because not means complement zero uh, not will give you 1 and 1 complement will give you 0 and the result of all the operations over here is a part or you can say element of this particular set itself so this set is closed under and operation or operation and not operation as you can see over here because the results of these operations are also the elements of 
these sets. So I hope you must have understood the meaning of closure here. Now let's move on to the next property. The next property is a very simple property. It is just that we know these formulas, but we usually do not know that what these formulas are named as or called as. So whenever we are asked in exams about the associative, commutative or distributive law, we forget that what are these formulas all about. So we must remember that associative law is very simple. A dot B inside the bracket dot C is similar to A dot B dot C inside the bracket. And same is the case with addition operation. All right. Now another one is commutative law. Commutative law is very simple. We follow it in our normal maths as well. A dot B is equal to B dot A and A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now distributive law. Distributive law is all about opening the bracket. You can remember it like this. So A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. So this is very simple. This we, these formulas or these laws we follow in our usual mathematics algebra also. Now the fifth property of Boolean algebra is identity. Identity means that any element when added to an element will uh, leave it unchanged. That is the identity element. So in the case of addition, zero is the identity element because whenever we add zero to any element it will not change the element and it will give you then identical element all right without any change so zero is the identity element of addition or you can say or and similarly one is the identity element of and operation because whenever you multiply one with any element it will leave it unchanged and it will give you an identical element as the answer now, next property is inverse or complement. Inverse or complement means, for example, there is a variable a, so the inverse of a is a bar, and if there is an a in the and operation, and again in the or operation, it is the inverse is a bar, which is giving you a 1. So, what is complement? Complement means the opposite of the variable. You simply have to put a bar over the variable. Now De Morgan theorem. De Morgan theorem is very important. There are two ways to write the De Morgan theorem. I have just represented the complement over here in this manner. All right. So these are the two same statements. So A plus B whole bar is giving you A bar dot B bar. A bar dot B bar. A dot B whole bar is giving you A bar plus B bar. So this is the De Morgan theorem. Okay. So now moving on to the next part. Another is Boolean algebra postulates and theorems. That is the formulas of Boolean algebra. Now there are basically we have to remember that there are mainly four formulas in Boolean algebra. One is AND laws. Another is OR laws. Third one is De Morgan theorem as you have seen it earlier and the fourth one is based on distributive law. All right. So these only these four formulas we have to remember and these four formulas will help us to simplify any Boolean expression that is available. All right. So and laws means it will give you all the formulas related to multiplication. So a dot zero will give you zero. This is our normal maths also says the same thing. A dot 1 will give you A that we also know. A dot A bar will give you 0. You can see it like this. A can have only two values either 0 or 1. So if A is 0 then A bar will be 1. 0 dot 1 will also give 0 and 1. If A is 1 then A bar will be 0. So 1 dot 0 will also give you 0. Same as A dot A is equal to A. Then all laws a plus 0 a, we know this, a plus 1 is 1. You can see it like this. If you put a as 0, so 0 plus 1 will also give you 1. And if a is 1, then 1 plus 1 is also 1 in Boolean algebra. So in every case, you get a 1. a plus a bar is equal to 1. Just put the values and see. 
and a plus a is not equal to 2a because there is only two, only two values over here that is 0 and 1. So a plus a is only a. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 1. So these, this is the all laws. Now De Morgan theorem, we have already seen it. And the fourth formula is based on distributive. So in Boolean algebra, if you find an expression like a plus c d, you can break it into two parts. That is a plus c dot a plus d. So these are the four formulas or the four theorems or postulates of Boolean algebra. Now, important thing, very, very important thing that usually comes in the exams. For example, you are asked to prove the associative law. So first of all, you must remember what was the associative law and you have to write it down. So I wrote down the formula that we read earlier. That is a dot b bracket dot c is equal to a dot bracket b dot c. Now, if you are asked in exam to prove any law that is commutative law, distributive law, or associative law as is the case over here, then always prove it by the truth table. That means that first of all, see that how many variables are there. I think there are three variables, A, B, and C. Then make the possible eight combinations. All right. That is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And you can make eight combinations. 2 raised to the power 3, 8. So three variables, because there are three variables. So 2 raised to the power 3, there will be eight combinations. Now, we will start from LHS. First of all, we will calculate A dot B. So I have calculated A dot B by multiplying each element. That is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 dot 1. And I have got these answers. All right. Now, a dot b dot c for the LHS. Now, I will multiply this element and this element and I will get a dot b bracket dot c. So, I get, I am getting the LHS. Now, for the RHS, first of all, I will be calculating the bracket part that is b dot c and further I will be calculating a dot b dot c. And I will match the these two. I will match these two parts. these two parts and i see that these two parts are similar to each other that means lh lhs is equal to rhs and hence prove so always remember that whenever you are asked to prove any law then just simply prove them by means of truth table all right similar is the case with the commutative law similar will be the case for the distributive law and so on so do not get confused. Whenever you are asked to prove any laws, you can prove them by means of truth table. All right. Now let's move on to the next question. That is prove x plus x is equal to x. Now if you do not understand anything, you can also prove it by means of truth table as I have done over here. I have taken x. There was only one variable. It can have only two values, 0 and 1. And I wrote it again because I have to write x plus x, LHS. I added them and showed and proved that LHS, this is the LHS and this is the RHS. So I proved that LHS is equal to RHS. So you can do it in this way also or you can do it in this way as well that I have taken the LHS, x plus x and if I want to uh, leave it unchanged, so I will multiply it with 1 and instead of 1, I will put x plus x bar, open the bracket, take the x common and by using the Boolean formula that we read above, that means the four formulas, 1 plus x bar, 1 plus anything will give you 1. So it will be only left x. So we can prove it in this manner also. All right. And you can prove it by means of truth table as well. Similar is the absorption theorem. What is the absorption theorem? First of all, you need to remember this. So when x plus xy is there, we can check uh, so it is equal to x. So you can remember this absorption theorem. So it is sometimes asked in the exams that what is absorption theorem? So it is simply x plus xy is equal to x. And how to prove it? Just take x common from here. You will be left in the bracket 1 plus pi, 1 plus pi, 1 plus anything is equal to 1. So, it will, the answer will be x. 
So this is the proof of absorption theorem. So this is how we can prove various theorems. And now uh, let's simplify some Boolean functions to a minimum number of literals. See what is literal? First of all, you must understand it. This is a very simple term. Only the word is difficult, literal. Literal means the variables. So you just have to simplify the expressions into the minimum number of variables. Or simply you can say that you have to simplify the expression. All right. Now the first expression is, as you can see, x into x bar plus y. So what you have to do for simplification, you simply have to use the four formulas that we have read above. That means and laws, or laws, De Morgan and the A plus C D formula. All right. Open the bracket simply. So in the and laws, you read A x plus x bar, that sorry, x dot x bar, that means A dot A bar is 0 plus x y. So you will be only left x y. So further simplification not possible. So the answer is x y. Now in the second part, for example, let's have a question x plus x bar y. Now you can simply use the fourth formula that was a plus c d. And what was the formula? You can open it like a plus c into a plus d. All right. So here when you will practice, you will be able to see it clearly that by using this formula, you are you are able to simplify it. How? It will become x plus x bar into x plus y. x bar plus x bar will become 1. All right. According to our all laws, and you will be only left with x plus y. Further simplification, not possible. Now, the third question is x plus y into x plus y bar. Oh, simply open the brackets and let us see what happens. So when you will op open the brackets, you will get this. Now in this expression, you are getting a y dot y bar. That means it will become 0. And now it will, you will be left with this. Clearly, you can see that you can take x common from here. Just take x common. 1 plus anything is equal to 1. So you are left with answer x. So you simplified such a big expression into just x. So this is how we simplify uh, the expressions by using the Boolean postulates and theorems or simply you can say Boolean formulas. So I hope that this lecture uh, is quite useful for you all. If yes, then kindly do like and subscribe the channel and share this uh, channel with as many as you can. Thank you all.